Hey everyone and welcome to another study. So for this study we're going to be continuing our look at the house of David. I hope you prayed for the Spirit of Christ to lead you and you've got your Bibles open. So let's look at our theme verse. And the general idea here is after the shaking the stones of the spiritual temple are all being fitted together by the master builder who is Christ. Haggai 2 6 for thus says the Lord of hosts once more it is a little while and I will shake heavens and earth the sea and the dry land I will shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations who is Christ and I will fill this temple with glory says the Lord of hosts the silver is mine and the gold is mine says the Lord of hosts uh, the silver and the gold referring to the utensils of the temple which are the remnant in Bible symbology the glory of the latter temple the remnant shall be greater than the former Herod's temple says the Lord of hosts and in this place I will give peace so here we have a look ahead to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on to the first point so in part one we saw that the house of David is currently in a state of disrepair why is that the people of God had no love for the truth so God gave them up to the four horns of desolation 2nd Thessalonians 2 10 and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved and of course John 14 6 I am the way the truth and the life so you can't separate Christ from truth and true doctrine Isaiah 59 14 justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off for truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter so truth fails and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey and that is exactly what occurred with the Old Testament prophets Zechariah 2 6 up up flee from the land of the north says the Lord for I have spread you abroad like the four winds of heaven says the Lord Jeremiah 12 10 many rulers have destroyed my vineyard they have trodden my portion underfoot they have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness they've made it desolate desolate it mourns for me the whole land is made desolate because no one takes it to heart the plunders have come on all the desolate heights in the wilderness for the sword of the Lord shall devour so as a result of the people not having the love for the truth Jesus brings against them the four horns of judgment and this time period is 586 BC to 1798 so this aligns with the four forms of destruction the sword to slay the dogs to drag the birds of the heaven and the beast of the field to devour and destroy and it also aligns with scattering them to the four winds so foreign Bible symbology is a symbol of judgment so on to the four horns Zechariah 118 then I raised my eyes and looked and there were four horns and I said to the angel who talked with me what are these and he answered these are the horns that have scattered Judah Israel and Jerusalem again that started in 586 with Nebuchadnezzar attacking Jerusalem Joel 1 4 what the chewing locust left the swarming locust has eaten what the swarming locust left the crawling locust has eaten and what the crawling locust has left the consuming locust has eaten so we plot those out we see Babylon being the chewing locust meat of Persia being the swarming locust we see Greece as the crawling locust and we see Rome both pagan and papal they are the consuming locust so again that's why the uh, house of David is in disrepair because of these four forms of destruction so let's focus briefly on this last empire which is papal Rome and we know that it was set up 538 through 1798 so this is the biblical times time and half a time or 1260 years of persecution this is the time of the iron mixed with the clay we have churchcraft mixed with statecraft and the prophetic markers we really have bookends here on this prophecy we have the beast power receiving the power of the state and then losing the power of the state then in 1798 so let's read about that Revelation 11 1 then I was given a read like a measuring rod and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of God the altar and those who dwell in but leave out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it for it has been given to the Gentiles or the four horns and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months there I've done the math 42 times 30 is 1260 and I will give power to my two witnesses Old Testament New Testament and they will prophesy 1260 days clothed in sackcloth
All right, shifting focus a little bit. The house of David, or the kingdom, will be taken away from the imposters, Laodicea, and given to the genuine, Philadelphia. 1 Samuel 13, 13. And Samuel said to Saul, You've done foolishly. You've not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, for now the Lord whom would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. Again, the typology of this being Jesus. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. So the Valley of Vision chapter, Isaiah 22, verse 15. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, Go proceed to this steward, to Shebna, he was over the house, or the church. My Seventh-day Adventist friend should be well acquainted with this idea of steward and stewardship. And say, What have you here, and whom have you here, that you have hewn a sepulcher here, as he who hews himself a sepulcher on high, who carves a tomb for himself in a rock? So I will drive you out of your office and from your position." He will pull you down. Then it shall be in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the resurrection of God, the son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and strengthen him with your belt. I will commit your responsibility into his hands. He shall be a father to inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. So we have to be very careful because both the wheat and the tares, they are claiming that they both have the sanctuary truth. But who really has the truth of Christ and the love? Ezekiel 43, 7, And he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne, the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. No more shall the house of Israel defy my holy name, they nor their kings, with the harlotry of the carcasses of their kings on their high places. When they set their threshold by my threshold and their doorpost by my doorpost, with the wall between them and me, they defiled my holy name by the abominations which they committed. Therefore I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put their harlotry and their carcasses of their kings far away from me, and I will dwell in their midst forever. In other words, it's not enough just to have the sanctuary knowledge and to dwell adjacent to Christ. He has to live in you, and the only way he can live in you is by death to self. So for the last point of the study, we are going to focus on the fact that the Church of Philadelphia is the house of David. They're the only church without fault before God. They have the key of David, the Word, and they have God's name in their midst. That all refers to Jesus living in them. They have a little strength, and they have the seal of God. Remember, Philadelphia, brotherly love. This is Jesus' divine love, plus the truth, the law according to the Spirit. That equals perfection in Christ. Revelation 3, 7, the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things says, He is holy, he who is true, he who has a key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I've set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. For you have a little strength. That's one of the characteristics of Philadelphia. Have kept my word and have not denied my name. Of course, my name being in him, which refers to Jesus. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, Laodicea, who say they're Jews and not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Because you've kept my command to persevere, I will keep you from the hour of trial, which will come upon all the earth to test those who dwell in the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no man take away your crown." He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Pillars do not move. They are set in place in the sanctuary. And he shall go out no more. This is the seal of God. I will write on him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Romans 13, 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. Philadelphia. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. There you have it, folks. It isn't the fourth commandment, but all the law is fulfilled in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. For the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there's any other commandment, they're all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. 
And then jump into verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. So that is the perfection in Christ. We have no provision or desire of the flesh. Matthew 22, 36. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And these two are a package deal. If you have the first one, you have the second one. If you have the second one, you will also have the first one. But the Laodicean leaders in the church are saying, you cannot have perfection. You will keep sinning until Jesus comes. And that is sin and live doctrine, and it is false. Matthew 5, 43, you've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good for those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he who makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. So the next section, we have a bit of a dichotomy here. We have weakness, but we also have strength and boldness. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul says. When I am weak, then I am strong. When I don't trust in myself and I die to self, I recognize that weakness. I let Jesus fulfill the law in me. Zechariah 12, 7, The Lord will save the tents of Judah first, so the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall not become greater than that of Judah. In that day the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them, remember that refers to Philadelphia having a little strength, in that day shall be like David. Remember David is a type of Christ. And the house of David shall be like God, perfect, like the angel of the Lord. And of course that is Jesus before the it shall be in that day I will seek to destroy all the nations that come up against Jerusalem, the ten horns. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son. And we know from the book of Ezekiel, only the ones that are sighing and crying are going to be sealed. Acts 4.13, Now when they saw the boldness, the strength, the confidence in Christ of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marvel, and they realized they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing among them, they could say nothing against it. Okay, so now we're going to look briefly at the key of David. The one who is sitting on David's throne is the one who has the key. And as we just read in Revelation chapter 3, the key of David is also in the church of Philadelphia. Isaiah 22, 22, the key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder. So he shall open and no one shall shut, and he shall shut and no one shall open. I will fasten him, Jesus, as a peg in a secure place, and he will become a glorious throne to his father's house. Zechariah 2.8, For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of my eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold... I am coming and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day and they will become my people and I will dwell in your midst. You will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you and the Lord will take possession of Judah as his inheritance in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent all flesh before the Lord for he is aroused from his holy habitation. So in summation, the people of God did not have a love for the truth. So that is why they were scattered to the four winds and the four horns came against them. And that lasted through 1798. Now in the time of the end, we see a true remnant and we see a false remnant. Uh, the true will receive the kingdom and it will be taken away from the false. And the head of the true is always going to be Christ. And that is the church of Philadelphia who Christ dwells in their midst and the key of David is within their midst. So I pray that you will continue to study these things. Blessings to you in the name of Jesus.